Today I'm going to begin a little mini-series on urban sketching for beginners. I'm doing this at the suggestion of a friend. She asked, Mary, have you ever done a video series about urban sketching for beginners? And I thought about it and I thought, no, I really haven't done that. I usually go out and do my sketching and show you guys what I'm doing. I just go have my fun <laughs> doing sketching. I really have not presented a video series geared toward telling beginners how they might approach going out and doing sketching in an urban environment. So let's talk about urban sketching. What is it? Well, typically when we do sketching, we either do it in our home, in our studio, in our craft room, in our schools, in our school rooms, maybe in a, if, if you have a studio in your studio. Well, urban sketching does not have to be in a town or a city or even in an urban area. Urban sketching has to do with the idea that you're going outside of your current environment. Urban sketching does not have to be outdoors. You can be doing urban sketching in a in a shopping mall, in a restaurant, in any other type of public area, in an enclosure, but you're not in your studio. You're not in your your area where you usually sit down and do other types of artwork. Now that's my definition of urban sketching. If you want a more formal definition, Google it. <laughs> I'm sure that there are a lot of authorities who have a, a really down pat answer for, for what urban sketching is. Google it and, and uh, see what they say. That's my attitude toward that. If you want to start urban sketching, my advice to you of how to start is to start. Just start. Don't worry about, is it going to be a masterpiece? What do I need? Do I have all the right tools? I mean, those are things to think about, but the thing is, you need to start. And I, what I'm going to do is just kind of show you some basic tools. I've tried to limit it to very basics. Some paper, pencil, maybe some type of coloring. I've chose watercolor and a, with that a water, watercolor brush and just something very basic. Paper. Think about what size you are comfortable with. I would suggest that you do get a notebook to sketch with. I do like to work with loose leaf papers but that's just one more Thing that you're going to have to deal with when you're out there because you're going to have to have some type of a sturdy base to put that loose leaf paper on. A sketchbook is right there. You can hold it in your hand or set it in your lap. It's, it's available to you and you have all your sketches in one place. Think about the size. Now this is a little notebook and I chose it because of the size. You can hold it in your hand. It's very unobtrusive. If you're out among people, you can very easily open this up and fold it over, hold it in one hand, and sketch with the other without drawing a lot of attention to yourself. And that's a whole nother topic. But it's just, it's very convenient. I do like this size. The disadvantage of a small size is you are going to be sketching small, but I find it very convenient to use. The next size up is a, uh, like a 5x7, 5x8, 9x6 pad. This is sketch paper. It's a little bit more sturdy, but it does not receive wet media well. It will wrinkle. You can see I do have some pages where I've done applied some water to the pages and it it does wrinkle. It does warp. 
but that's okay too. Some people like the warping. <laughs> In fact, this is the book that I'm going to use for this series. But I wanted to show you, there's the mixed media paper. This is a stronger, more durable paper. It receives wet media well. It's it is 98 pound paper. So this would make a, a really nice sketch pad for urban sketching. The last paper that I'm going to talk about, of course, is watercolor paper. And you can get watercolor paper in all different sizes. This happens to be the 9 by 12, which is, of course, the next step up in the size list that I'm showing you here. Watercolor paper is meant to receive wet media, watercolors. And you can also take your paper out and work on it loose leaf, which is what I've been doing, but that introduces a whole nother element to your urban sketching because if you take it out, of course you can work on the back of the pad like this, but you still need something sturdy to work on. As far as what to start sketching with, a pencil, any type of pencil. I happen to grab just a Bic mechanical pencil. That works fine for putting a really quick sketch down. I like to sketch with ink, and I like these ink R2 rollerball pen. I get them two for a dollar at the dollar store and I do like sketching with them because they have water soluble ink. But any type of ink pen that you're comfortable with. Now you can go to the art stores and get all sorts of fancy art media, uh, all sorts of fancy ink pens. There are the Vision pens, there's Micron pens, there's Faber-Castell pens and pencils. I mean, there's just a lot to experiment with. And that's what I would tell you to do as you do more sketching and as you become in more comfortable with sketching. Purchase different types of media and experiment with it. But to start out, all you really need is a pencil. You could have a plain lead pencil. You could have a drawing pencil. I picked up this little mechanical pencil because it was convenient for me. Right before I walked out the door, this is what I said I was going to sketch with. And I put it in an eyeglass case along with my ink pen. <laughs> and because I am using watercolors, I picked up a watercolor brush. Now, I like these flat ones. This is a Tim Holtz watercolor brush, a Ranger one. I do like these. I like them because I can go this way and get a line and I can use, I can get a broad flat area and I can get more of a standard, just a wide medium swipe of color down my page got a lot of versatility to it and I as you can tell I've used it and used it and used it I don't have water in it at the moment you don't really need to put water in your water brush in fact a lot of times I don't I have a little sprayer here that I got at Sally's Beauty Supply and it's filled with tap water if you want to use bottled water or distilled water go for it I just use tap water out of the sink you use this to activate your watercolors and I even at times just put plain water in my pan and get my brush wet that way. Of course you can fill this too. This little brush tip screws off this way this little black area comes out and you put water of your choice in the barrel of the water brush and then when you want to use it you squeeze on this shank that has the water in it and it forces water down into the brush and you do your watercoloring that way 
As far as watercolor, this is my original set that I used when I first started doing urban sketching on a regular basis. It's been lovingly used through the years. It's a Winsor Newton little travel pack. I have changed my colors around here. I put in a black where there was a green. I have a dark green here. I have a blue that I mixed with my yellow to make a, a green. And then I have a lighter blue down here, the white, the yellow ochres, the reds, the browns. And as you can remove these little pans and add colors of your choice, I basically have used what's there and as I use it I refill it with whatever I want to refill it. I got this I believe it at either Hobby Lobby or Michaels several years ago and I've used and used and used it and I've refilled the little pans. So what I'm going to do is just a little bit different. I'm going to show you now the sketch that you'll see me do later on in this segment. I went outside on the front porch and I sketched the flower pots. And for me, it isn't as important as what you are sketching when you first do your first sketch as to actually going out and starting it. It doesn't matter that it doesn't look exactly what's in front of your face. What are you putting down on the page? You do not need to stand and look at something and fill this whole page with it. I could have done this flower pot as one little thing over here, and it still would have been an urban sketch if I was outside looking at it and sketching it. As you go out and sketch, there are a lot of things that you're dealing with. There's the environment. I guarantee you that the wind is going to blow there's going to be noise. In fact, I'm going to, to let some of the noise show through on my video. The train whistles are going to blow. The airplanes are going to go over. People are going to talk. People are going to notice that you're doing something over there. Some of them may come up and talk to you and say, what are you doing? Even if you're alone, you're going to have environmental issues. The sun is going to be in your face. Uh, there's going to be a fly buzzing around. You're going to drop your water bottle. You're going to spill things on your page. There's a lot of frustrating things to deal with in an outside environment. But you know what? That's part of the fun of urban sketching. There's all sorts of things to deal with when you are working outside of an environment where you have a lot of control. And then the other thing that I would say to beginners is you are a human. You are not a camera. Do not try, especially if you're, if, unless you are a genius artist, you're not going to represent this flower pot in a photographic manner. You are going to interpret it and put it on the page. Do not try to be a camera unless unless you are one. If you're a camera, go for it. But I, I would say that 99.9% .9 of us are not, especially when you're beginning, to not do intricate photorealistic drawings. Don't expect that out of yourself. Don't let other people expect it out of you. Go out, have fun. Choose something that you want to draw. If you want to spend three minutes drawing it, if you want to spend five minutes, if you just want to catch a fast sketch of it and take it back into your studio and work on it there. So this is the sketch that I did for this video. I am, in the end, very happy with it. But I'll tell you this, I'm more happy with it now that I'm inside of my studio inside looking at it in a controlled environment not comparing it to what was in front of my face and I think that I could say that most of us would feel that way walk away from it when you're finished when you feel like you're at a good stopping point walk away from it let the page dry fold up all your all your drawing media. Wait longer than an hour, three hours. Come back and look at it and you'll look at it and you'll say, hey, I really had fun doing that. 
that really isn't so bad. And you'll want to go do it again. I'm going to sign this. The other thing that I think you should definitely do is take ownership. Because I'll tell you, three months from now, four months from now, three, five years from now, you'll wonder when you did this. And just putting your name to it, putting a date, 723 I did this, 2017. And you can write it across there as comfortably, or if you want to just make it really small down there, however you want to sign it. Take ownership of it. In summary, what I really want to get across in this very first beginning series video is start. If you want to do urban sketching, grab a pencil, a pad of paper, watercolor, whatever you have at hand that you're comfortable with, go do it. Begin. Go out in your backyard. Go someplace where you're comfortable, where you feel comfortable sketching, and just start. Just do it. Quit trying to imagine and wish that you were like somebody else. And go do your art. And then after you're done, close up the book, walk away from it, come and look at it a day or two later, and you'll say, hey, I really had fun doing that. That was really fun. I'm going to go do it again. And go work on the next page. The other thing that I wanted, the point that I wanted to, to make was expect frustrations. Expect it so that when it happens, you go, oh, this is just one more thing I have to deal with. It's just, it can be frustrating, but it's just part of the fun of going outside of a controlled studio environment and sketching things that are live in front of you. It is life in front of you. It is not a still life. It's it's not something you're sketching from a photograph. It's not something that you are imagining. It is life happening in front of you. So I hope that these thoughts that I have on urban sketching have inspired you to go out and try something. Yeah, it will be better than you thought and you'll want to go on to the next page and the next page and the next page. What if it isn't better than you thought? What if you still have this, is this horrible thing? Well, we're going to talk about that. What you're looking at is a page that I did at my skill level. Your skill level may not be at my skill level. You may be a very advanced artist, but haven't done any urban sketching. Uh, but you may be a beginner and may be struggling with getting a flower to look like a flower. So we're going to talk about that later, but just go do it. Don't worry about it, whether it's a masterpiece or not. It is your interaction with the life out there that matters. And we'll talk about if it's not a masterpiece. We'll talk about that in a later video. So I'm going to close this beginning summary now, and I'm going to show you some of the things that I was dealing with even doing this sketch. And it might surprise you, <laughs> some, of the, some of the things that happened to me. If you've been watching my urban sketching videos of other years, it may not surprise you either. There's just a lot to deal with. But I'm going to walk you through what I did when I did this sketch. What you are looking at are some flowers off of our front porch here in the front steps. I am going to do a beginner series on urban sketching. and. I figured that the best way to start is to go out in your backyard or in your front yard, pick an object and that you're comfortable with, something very simple like flower pots, and just start. I'm starting this sketch with my ink R2 rollerball pen and this Bic 
lead mechanical pencil. That's all I'm using. Now I am sitting on the front porch in a porch swing that is kind of squeaky. So you're going to hear the squeaks. And it's a very loud and active Sunday morning. The airplanes are flying over me and there are birds singing and people talking and cars going by. And not only is that a tiny bit frustrating, but it's also a part of what makes urban sketching so very, very fun. Now you're going to see some jiggling here on my camera. That's just a part of urban sketching because you need to find areas where you're comfortable sketching. I'm not saying I'm totally comfortable here, but just because I'm kind of frustrated with my camera not being set up right. I like to do a lot of urban sketching sitting in my car and my camera is attached to my visor. I'm trying out here attaching my camera to a gooseneck holder but the only way I could get it hooked up for this viewpoint was to hook it on this porch swing and I'm sitting on the swing. <laughs> so that makes my camera jiggle. But I'm saying hey this is urban sketching deal with the jiggle. Deal with the sunshine, deal with the airplanes. This is a, a weekend in our town where they're having a celebration and there's a lot of airplanes. There's an old World War II Air Force base out here. I don't know what they're celebrating. <laughs> and the pigeons and the doves are cooing and the birds are chirping and the sun is shining and the cars are going by although this is a Sunday morning now you can see here I have done just a very basic light pencil sketch and I've concentrated just on the flower pots here and I've just put in some lines, just free and loose, and just very, very loose. So I'm going to come in here with some watercolor. I'm going to activate my watercolor with my spritzer here. So if you want an urban sketch and you want to get started, my advice to anybody who wants to get started Stop worrying about getting started and just go do it. Do something. Put some marks on your paper. Don't worry about if it looks like what you're, what you're sketching. Don't worry about if it looks like what somebody else sketches. Just go do it. Don't worry about if your brush is clean or dirty. <laughs> you see, I'm just putting some... Now, I don't want a darker color, a darker blue on there. So I put some more water in there. I'm going to mix it with the white. And you'll see that in the pans, I sometimes get my colors all dirty. Mixing one color with the other, I get blue in my white and white in my blue. I don't worry about those things. See, I'm just putting some color down here just to get this space filled in. And in fact, there's blue in here. There's a little blue out in here. Bring the little blue down in to there. Now I want some green. That's black. I do have a... Boy, they are. Those planes are flying today, aren't they? It's kind of the joy of being out and about. I'm going to clean my brush off here. I didn't want black. <laughs> Putting lots of water on my watercolor here. Oops. See, I dropped my, I dropped my water. I'm going to have to get up and get it. 
Okay. I've retrieved. <laughs> I've retrieved my water. Don't let those little frustrations get to you. Work through them. I got black and I wanted green. I don't have green, so I'm going to mix a green. I want more of a yellowy green. Play with your colors. Don't worry about them being... And I'm just putting some leaves on this planter here. Just loosely work in. Your leaves here. Maybe some little dot leaves. Don't let the frustrations get to you. Just keep moving. Now you can see I've started playing with my bristle brushes there and I'm putting in leaves that don't exist. <laughs> And my camera's jiggling because I'm laughing. And here's the funny thing. I'll probably have to go in there and reverse this video because I don't know if I have it right side up or sideways. Or... One thing about urban sketching, no matter where you are, you seem to draw an audience. And that's something even the most experienced Urban Sketcher still has to deal with. People get curious. What are you doing? I'm going to do this flower pot over here in kind of like an orange yellow color. And I want more. Just putting in some marks. Just having fun with. Now this flower pot is more of a gray blue, so I'm going back to get that black and I'm going to get some white and I'm going to mix a gray. Just put in a hint of black and there we go. Now it's a little bit more opaque than I'm wanting it, so I'm getting out my water again and just kind of squeezing some water on my brush. just wetting it down. I want a little bit more transparent. And there we go. I don't want to get this paper too wet because I know that it's not a strong paper. I'm just playing around with putting in some flower pots here. You also might want to think about putting some shadow on this one. And then you have the cement down here in this area. So you want just a little bit lighter, so I'm going to put some more water in that gray. So are you getting a jiggly view on this? <laughs> That's because it's urban sketching. I'm not in a studio where I have everything nice and steady and proper if I ever had that in my studio. Now I'm going up to the leaves and I'm putting in some more green on my leaves. And I want some more yellow in there. Yellow and blue make green. Put a little bit more blue in there. It's a darker green. I'm just gonna play with putting in some leaves right here over the ones and you can see I put the lighter colors in first, and now I'm going in and painting in some darker leaves. And really, I'm just sketching with my paintbrush. I'm not worrying about the pencil. I'm not worrying about the pencil marks that are still there. Well, I'm not worrying about whether it looks realistically. What I'm worrying about is the camera jiggling. <laughs> Now I still want to do some urban sketching from my car in this series, but 
not in this video, but in a later video in this series, I'll show you how I do the urban sketching for my car. But I just wanted to come out today and do some urban sketching from my porch. Now, my blue almost looks gray. And that really kind of frustrates me. Now I'm putting some more blue in there, but it's a little bit darker than what I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to squirt some water on it and lift some of that color off just to lighten it up a bit. Now I'm also wanting to do just a bit of the red for the flowers. And I'm just going to I'm just going to brush them in. Cleaning off my brush here first. Getting my brush nice and clean. I clean off my brush different ways. Sometimes I use a wipe off paper. Sometimes I swoosh it in water if I have a, a cup of water handy. Sometimes I wipe it off on my hand. Now I'm getting ready to put those red flowers in. Kind of filling in the flower pot here. There's no red in this flower pot realistically. But I'm going to add a couple down here. Just to give it some color. Use your imagination. It doesn't have to look like what you're doing. You're getting inspired by your environment around you. And you'll be surprised. You may not like it while you're working on it, but you'll walk away from this in a couple of weeks. You'll be looking at it and say, hey, that's not half bad. I kind of like it now. <laughs> okay. I want to emphasize some of the lines here a little bit more now, so I'm going to use my ink pen. And I'm drawing on damp paper, but that's okay. And let's just emphasize the leaves a little bit more, just kind of using my imagination to fill them in. Now there's all sorts of urban sketching. There are people who do this very detailed. What I'm doing might really frustrate other artists, but that's okay. They work their way and I'll work mine. How about that? Now I'm still wanting more red because I'm seeing that red is fading to more of a pinkish color. And I do like pink. But I wanted some darker red. So where's my brush? How about some orange red? And the brush is actually forming the flower for me here. So urban sketching is not about perfection for me. And I would hope it wouldn't be for you. It's about getting outside. It's about observing things around you and enjoying things around you. Look, there's a leaf there that I wanted to do. Right there. Got all this red, and you know, and one thing you can do instead of wiping off here's the wipe off page I have back here. Wipe, wipe your brush off back on a page in the back of your book. Get your brush nice and clean. I want to get all that beautiful red off of my brush. Yeah. There we go.
things like that will happen. So wipe it up. All right, I wanted to put that green leaf in there. So this is just about getting out. This isn't about your camera not jiggling. This isn't about trying to make what you're doing look exactly what you're looking at. This is about getting outside, taking a pad, taking a pencil of paint. I don't know what that noise is all about. Dogs barking and people talking in the background. I'm kind of frustrated that my blue is a is a gray blue. Let's go back to my wipe off page. Get that green off. Sometimes I take these wipe off pages and make ATCs out of them. Backgrounds for ATCs. What's on the back of this? Look, I was writing my name. I was experimenting here. It looks like I was experimenting with a R2 pen. So that's how I do it. <laughs> hey, I like it. Just flip them back to it. I wanted to do more blue. I think it's my white that's causing my blue to be, it's really an opaque blue. And I am putting a lot of water on this sketchbook pad. And I'll bring it down here. A lift in it, not that much color. What is that line down there? That's the black wire of our porch. I was saving that for last. Let's go do it. I could do that with my ink pen, but I think I'm going to do it with my brush. Right down here. That's black iron work. And he actually comes in here too, kind of in the background. And he has a kind of a curvy iron work in there. There. So don't expect perfection out of yourself. Just go do something and I think you'll find that you'll be you'll be happy with it. More happy than you what you think you would be. Now, what I want to do is the sun is coming from the east, so the pots facing me are going to have more of a shadow because I'm sitting on the porch. So the light is really coming toward me and there's shadow on the side of the pots and the plants facing me. So I'm wanting to mix some darker shades of color and paint in some shadows. I'm thinking some down below on the cement. So I'm mixing some darker black there in the gray, a dark gray color. See, I'm just kind of painting the shadow of the pot down below. It's very um, fast sketching, very loose sketching. I'm not trying to be precise here. Some, some artists do really precise. Look, I'm putting in the shadow of the leaves there. Some artists put, uh, do very precise urban sketching. And I think I do more painterly. I'm darkening up that side of the pot again, letting some light show off on the sides. Another one thing that I wanted to say is when I'm out urban sketching, 
the very fact that I'm filming it so that I can show everybody affects my sketching because I it just adds another element to the whole process it's something to think about I'm thinking about you know is it in view is my paper jiggling uh, what are you seeing am I making sense to the viewer so all of that affects my sketching where if I were just sitting there not filming it and doing a sketch uh, I might turn out with a an entirely different sketch clean my brush off on the white the paper pad the wipe off paper putting in a leaf there just doing my happy little painting here my planter I'm really happy with how it's coming out now I'm getting out my pen and emphasizing the outlines of the leaves here just a little bit more you can do that you can switch back and forth between your pens and again this is a water soluble pen if I wanted to wet that ink and uh, blur out those lines I could but in this case I don't just emphasize I'm really happy with how it's turned out I'm really getting close to being finished I'm really happy with it